Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a calculator application built with PySimple GUI. This calculator is based loosely on the Texas Instrument Datamath 2, which was manufactured around 1975. So if you're looking to add a project to your portfolio, or you just want to get some more experience with a GUI, then you've come to the right place. Although the calculator functionality does take a bit more code, you can actually get the fully formatted GUI up and running in about 20 lines of code, which is pretty incredible. Instead of boring you with about 40 minutes of watching me code, I'm going to instead walk you through quickly everything you're going to need to get started on this project, including a very brief recap of the GUI framework, the design choices I made, as well as the approach I take on the calculator functionality. I'll then give you a link to the code so that you can check it out and play with it yourself, which is a really good way to learn. This project is going to use the PySimple GUI library, which is a framework for Tkinter. Tkinter typically comes standard with Python distributions. However, if you don't have it, you can install it by typing in pip install Tkinter uh, in your command prompt. And speaking of installation, you'll need to install PySimple GUI with either pip or conda. And depending on your operating system and Python distribution, it's likely going to be one of the following commands. Finally, before we get started, I'm going to be using a Digital 7 font for this project. It looks really good on a calculator display, however it's not required. You can use the Franklin Gothic book with no problem, but be aware that sizing the buttons and labels is based on the font, so you may need to tweak the element sizes to get the look you want if you decide to use a different font. With a PySimple GUI application, there are three essential design elements. The window, which is what you recognize as an application window. The layout, which contains the elements in the window, such as buttons, text, etc. And finally, the event loop, which listens for events such as button clicks and other types of events, and executes the callbacks or instructions that you specify. Let's look at the layout in more detail. PySimple GUI manages the layout with lists. If you think about the elements in the window in terms of rows, the entire layout is a list container. Each row in the window is managed by another list, which contains all of the elements in that row. You can see here that I have the outer list for the layout, and then in each row I have a new list with text labels and buttons corresponding to the rows and elements on the calculator. This makes for a very intuitive way to manage a GUI layout. Let's go ahead and look at the code for this layout. Here you can see a snapshot of the code for the GUI. After I imported the library, I set up some default values, which I'll get to in a second, and then I coded the layout. As you saw in the previous illustration, the layout is a list of lists, where each list within the layout contains the elements of each row of the calculator. While there's a lot of elements here, I'm only using two types, a text element, which accepts a required text argument, along with additional keyword arguments, and a button element, which has no required arguments, but has a variety of keyword arguments similar to the text element. As you can see by looking at the calculator, the elements share a lot of common attributes, such as size, color, font size, etc. So instead of having to type those arguments in each of the buttons, I decided to create a dictionary for the most common scenarios. And in this case, there are three. One for the white buttons, one for the tan buttons, and one for the orange button. Using these default values allows me to avoid writing a lot of code and also makes this thing much easier to look at. Because keyword arguments can be accessed via a dictionary, I can unpack this dictionary in the button objects by using star operators. A single star will unpack a tuple, but a double star will unpack a dictionary, which is what I'm doing here. A few notes about the default values. The size is relative to the font and is stated in number of characters, so this is translated as 7 characters wide and 2 characters high. For colors, you have two options predefined color strings such as black, blue, red, etc. Or you can use the hexadecimal colors to really fine tune the look you want. You can see that I have an option here for focus. If you look at the orange button here, you see a very fainted dotted line. This indicates that this button has focus, which basically means that it's active. Finally, let's look at the window. This requires a window title, which I've put as PyDataMath2, and then I've indicated which layout I want to use in this window by passing to the layout argument the layout variable that we created above. If you want your GUI to actually do something, you're going to need an event loop. At the very least, you need the top section just to keep your window open while the program listens for events. When you call the read method on the window element, the window is opened up on the screen. Every time an event occurs, the window returns two items, the event name and a dictionary of values from any input element on the screen. You can see here that I've pressed several buttons, and each time I get the name of the event, 
which in this case is the button name, and then I get an empty dictionary. The reason for an empty dictionary here is that I have no input elements on this GUI, such as a text box, drop box, or other element that would store some kind of user input. You can see in this while loop that the first item is accounting for none events. A none event type occurs when you click the X button to close the window at the upper right hand corner of the screen. And when this occurs, we simply want to break out of the loop and close the window. You can see how easily you could perform callbacks by simply evaluating the name of the event. So let's look a little bit more about how callbacks are handled in PySimple GUI. Callbacks are very simple. In this case, I have several value buttons that I want to check for. If the name of the event is equal to any of the values that I have in this list, then I'm going to execute the number click function. Any event can be handled in this way. Next, let's talk about updating window elements. Since this is a calculator, I obviously need to update the display as buttons are clicked, but how does this work in PySimple GUI? You'll notice that in this update display function, I'm using the window element that I created earlier like a dictionary, and I'm looking up a key that I've defined as display. This display is in fact the text element that I defined in my layout. And in PySimple GUI, when you assign a key to the element, you can use that key to look up the item from the window and perform updates on it. In this case, the text element has an update method that allows me to update the text value of the label. Now that we've discussed the GUI, let me briefly talk about how I handled the calculator functionality, because to be honest, that's actually the harder part of this project. If you look at a number such as the one I have on the screen, you can separate it into three components, the front of the decimal, the back of the decimal, and of course, the decimal itself. As a number is entered into the calculator, I'm appending to the front or the back number list based on the value of the decimal flag, which is either true or false. This defaults to false, but then if I click the decimal button, uh, the flag becomes true, and then the program knows to append to the back of the number. This also makes it possible to create additional functionality, such as deleting the last number by popping it from the list, for example. So in order to update this screen with the current number, all of these elements must be brought back together. So how does this happen? Well, what I do is join all of the elements with the string.join method and then I concatenate them between a decimal. Finally, I pass this string into the float function in order to create a floating number that I can use to update the display as well as perform calculations. And that, my friends, is the project in a nutshell. If you want to download the code and start working on this project, you can find it located on my GitHub repository. Feel free to upgrade and modify to your heart's content. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and check out some of these other videos as well. See you later.